Welcome back to Questing Beast. I'm Ben. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to make these very high quality, very sturdy uh, tabletop tokens for Dungeons and Dragons using these wooden pieces and art from Magic the Gathering. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned because I'm going to be showing you how to make these not only very quickly, but also very cheaply on a per unit basis anyway. Uh, if you want to make lots of these, you're going to be able to make them uh, very fast. And they're a great substitute for miniatures. Uh, miniatures are expensive. A lot of them have to be painted and they take up a lot of space. They're hard to transport. This solves a lot of these problems. So I'm really excited to show you the tricks that I figured out to get this done fast. All right, so let's dig into this. There's going to be a couple of things that you're going to need. First off, you're going to need some wooden circles or wooden discs. Now, these ones I bought at my local craft store and they're relatively cheap, but if you're planning to make a lot of these tokens, and that is my plan, you probably want to buy them in bulk. And the best way to do that is to look around online for these uh, woodworking stores that sell these sorts of things in bulk. And I found one that sells a thousand of these for $48. So that means that each one of these is less than five cents. So I ordered a bunch of those. Uh, I haven't got them in the mail yet. So these are just the ones from the craft store, but um, just letting you know, you can get them for very, very cheap because the final cost of each of these tokens should be around five cents each, if I've done my math correctly. All right, so once you have your tokens, um, get as many of them as you need, you're going to need some art. Now I'm using Magic the Gathering art because there is a huge library of art for uh, Magic the Gathering. It covers a huge variety of um, different universes, different types of creatures, uh, different types of characters. It has everything you could possibly want. And Wizards of the Coast really spends a lot of money on this art, uh, getting it done really well. So there's two ways that you could do this. First way is you could decide to go online, find pictures of these cards, and then print them out. A lot of people recommended doing this, but for me, it is too labor intensive. Um, you need to find each piece of art individually. A lot of times they're too small to look really nice when you print them out uh, at the right resolution. Uh, you have to arrange them on your paper. You have to print them out in color and color printing can be expensive. So my solution is just to actually use magic cards. Uh, I know a lot of people are horrified at this idea, but yes, I'm using real magic cards and I'm just punching out holes in them to use for these tokens. Now, the obvious objection here is, aren't magic cards expensive? And the answer is no, not at all, if you buy them in bulk. The trick here is to go onto eBay and look for large collections, especially collections of commons and uncommons. Usually the keywords that you want are MTG, commons, uncommons, bulk. And you can find packets of 6,000 cards that are commons and uncommons uh, for around $40 or so. And that reduces the cost of each card to well below a penny. So once you have a huge collection like that, then you're gonna be able to sort through it and find all of the pictures that you like and get a nice wide assortment of creature types and start making these tokens for around five cents each. So let's look into how we would actually do that. Another piece of equipment that you're gonna need is a circle punch. So what I have here is one from EK Tools. There is a wide variety of different circle punches that you can get. This one was pretty highly rated, which is why I picked it up. Uh, there are some Fiskars ones that are, that are like scissors. You squeeze them and it punches a hole. Um, those seem quite popular, but they were very uh, poorly reviewed. So I ended up not going with these, with those ones. Um, this one is mostly metal. It feels very heavy, very solid. So I like it quite a bit. Now, as you may have noticed, this is a one and a half inch punch and I've gotten one and a half inch circles here. Now, um, if you are using a battle mat with a grid and you use the grid, then it might be worthwhile to go with uh, one inch circles and a one inch punch. Now there are some downsides to doing that. Um, the main thing is that it's a lot smaller. So you're not gonna be able to grab as much art from these cards as you would otherwise. Um, if you look at examples of some of the ones that I've made here already, for example, we got this little um, construct type thing. If you're using a one inch circle, you'd be cutting out a significantly smaller piece of it, which really reduces a lot of the detail and makes it harder to tell what you're looking at. For most characters, it means you're basically just gonna get a headshot of them. And I really wanted to get as much of that full, high quality Magic the Gathering art as possible. Also, I don't use a grid. So if the fact that they're slightly larger than one inch really makes no difference to me. 
There's another reason why you want them to be one and a half inches actually, and that is storage. I'm gonna to get to that once we finish up with this, about how I store these things. So you want your one and a half inch punch, and the nice thing is it has this hole on the bottom so you can see what you're punching. You stick it in through there. And another great thing is that the art on Magic the Gathering is almost exactly one and a half inches tall. So that's perfect, it all lines up. You just slide this right in here, and the nice thing about this EK Tools one is that if you push it all the way back, it pretty much lines up perfectly inside the art box. So there's very little adjustment you have to make. You might wanna move it around a little bit to make sure that it is lined up just the way you want it and you're not accidentally including any uh, borders on there that might sneak in just at the edges. And then once you have that, you just push down. And once you push this down, it's really gonna pop out. It tends to come flying out. So you want to be careful with that, that you don't lose it. Uh, let's move it over just a little bit. Sometimes you want to crop it just right. Okay, that's good. Point it down. And there we go. Got an awesome little piece of Magic the Gathering art. Very high quality, extremely high print quality. Like you can't see any pixels on this thing. This is extremely uh, well produced. Then you're going to want to get the wooden circle and you're going to need some glue. I'm using tacky glue which is like this giant bottle was $6. Um, there's no reason you need to get a bottle this big. It's quite cheap. Uh, it's similar to Elmer's glue or any sort of craft glue. Uh, I think it's a bit stronger than Elmer's glue though. And here's how I apply this. I just sort of go in a spiral and you want very little because this stuff goes a long way. So I just sort of smear it around Kind of like this. Good. That's basically all you need. It might even be a little bit too much. So we're going to apply it. You're going to try and line it up. Now, one thing is that this punch does make circles that are slightly larger than this. And I mean, just like a hair's breadth larger, which is a little bit annoying to me, but uh, what can you do? We're going to put it right on there and you're going to press down. Now, the trick here is that you want to apply a lot of pressure and you're gonna to want to also rotate it at the same time. That rotation is gonna get a nice even spread of glue underneath the picture. And if you press down hard and slowly rotate, you're gonna find that it starts sticking really quickly. That pressure and that friction starts activating the glue and it gets very tacky. And even now, just after a couple seconds of pressing down and slowly rotating, it's on there really well. I'd have a hard time getting that off. And after an hour or so, it's gonna be on there uh, quite permanently. Another big advantage of using actual card art from the cards rather than printing out your own is that it's on this nice quality card stock, which means that it is also coated and it's resistant to oil and it's not gonna smear. It's just gonna last for a really long time. The stuff is really sturdy. You're not gonna to need to spray it or anything else to keep it intact. So there we go. We've got an awesome little piece of Magic the Gathering art. So these things are uh, very sturdy because they're all wood backed. So they're not gonna get banged up or, they're not, uh, or bent or smeared or anything else like that. Uh, you can make these very quickly. Once you get your punch going, you can start punching out one card at a time and you can create a huge collection of different types of, of uh, tokens. So this is exactly what I was looking for and I was super happy with the results. Um, let's see here. Now for a storage solution, here's what I came up with. I discovered that these things are almost exactly the same size as a poker chip. So that means you can store them in a poker case. So here is a poker case I got from the thrift store. It is kind of gross, it's kind of dusty, but you take all your tokens, look at that. If you got a really big one of these cases, like a thousand chip case, these are about the same size. You could probably fit a thousand of these inside a thousand chip case. So you could have a section that was all just undead or just all constructs, all humans, all you know orcs and goblins or whatever. And then your players could just flip through these and pick a guy that looked like their character. And you could simply pull out a huge variety of high quality tokens to represent the creatures on the battlefield. Now, you may be wondering, what do I do with all the rest of my magic cards? Because you're gonna have a lot of them. Uh, if you buy you know, a good 6,000, four to 6,000 cards on eBay, not all of those are creature cards. 
A lot of them are land cards, artifacts, enchantments, spells, and so on. So there's a, a number of things that you can do with these. First off, it's good to point out that a lot of the um, non-creature cards can actually be used as creatures. For example, this one here is a spell called God's Willing. It's an instant, so it's, it's a spell that you cast in the game, but it's mostly character art. So you can just punch this out and you have a new piece of, of character art that you can put on a token. You also have things like artifacts, for example, like this one, it's like a pirate ship. You can use it to create a pirate ship. Um, but one thing that you can really do with a lot of the land cards, and I have discovered that this is actually a lot of fun, is there's two types of lands. You've got basic lands, if you've never played Magic before, and these are just island, uh, mountain, swamp, plains, and forests. But there's lots of these special lands that have you know special art and unique abilities. And if you collect enough of these, and you're going to get a lot of them probably if you get a big collection of Magic cards, you can create what I'm calling a card crawl, or it's like a square crawl. So what you do is you can just have a giant collection of these, you shuffle them up, and then you just lay them out in a grid, like so. And you can kind of create this randomized fantasy landscape. And notice how some of these aren't actually lands, like this is an enchantment, that's an enchantment as well. But as long as the art looks like a landscape, that's all that you really need. And you can create these sort of fantasy square crawl or a card crawl that your characters can use to navigate, right? So you can either use this as the actual map of your D&D world, or you can use it to inspire what your D&D world might look like. So it's really great for that. I've heard of other DMs who have a deck of these cards, and whenever their players are traveling overland, they just pull out a card and look at it and use it to inspire their descriptions. Because not everyone's really great at describing landscapes, and the variety here is enormous. There are thousands of these cards that all have excellent, unique art. As far as the artifact cards go, you can use those as D&D artifacts. So here we have a bunch um, from some recent sets that I picked up. And you can basically reskin these as D&D &D magic items, right? If you're using them strictly for D&D, &D, you could even write, you know, with a, like a Sharpie on here what its new name was. And this allows players to actually hang onto the cards, see the picture of them, and allows them to trade them back and forth uh, very easily. So that's a really cool way to add some extra flavor. And um, you still have other stuff, like you might have enchantments uh, or sorceries or instants that don't really work as character art or as a landscape, but you can still use them as events and inspiration for encounters that the players run into. So there's tons of material that you can steal here. Now, I know what some players have done is they've taken these lands and they've gotten a different uh, punch, like a hex punch. So it's like the one that I showed you, but it's a hexagon. And they've used it to punch out hexagons of each of the art here and used it to create a hex crawl. I think that's a really cool idea. Uh, it has some downsides, uh, mostly that you're losing a lot of the art here and that having lots of these little cardboard hexes is kind of fiddly and hard to use. And I found it a little bit annoying. Uh, so I think it's actually easier just to keep them as full cards because they're easier to, to deal with. Um, so that's it. That's what I am using magic cards for. Um, making these tokens is really fun and you can really theme them however you want. Um, some players recommended writing numbers on them so you can track them more easily, but there's such a huge variety. You don't even really need to do that. Like if you want 10 goblins, you can easily have 10 different pictures, right? For each of the, the goblin cards or each of the goblin tokens, because magic has probably hundreds of cards dedicated to goblins. So you can have unique art for everything. Uh, which is really, really cool. Um, yeah, so I'm super excited about this. Uh, if you want a particular theme, you can always go with a particular set. Uh, for example, if you're going to do like a fantasy city, I mean, Ravnica is an actual setting in D&D now, right? What you could do is you could actually pick up those uh, particular sets, the Ravnica sets. If you go on eBay, what you can do is you can look up um, collections of one each of all of the of each common and uncommon from a magic set people tend to sell these um, mostly for people playing a specific format of magic but you could go to guilds of ravnica um, times one um, commons uncommons and you will, you'll find people selling that and it'll give you one of each of those types of cards and so you'll have a land card You'll have land cards that all have like cityscapes and gardens and things that you would find in Ravnica. And you'll have lots of creatures that match it. So you'll have this complete setup of land art and creatures that perfectly match the theme that you want. D&D &D has Gothic horror settings. It has Greek themed settings. It has Egyptian themed settings. It has very classic fantasy themed. So you can get 
any type of creature or card that you can possibly imagine. It is out there. Um, but getting a, just a giant bulk set is probably the way to go just to get maximum variety. Uh, anyway, that's my tutorial for today. Uh, hope that it was helpful to you. Um, I talked a little bit about it on Twitter and people were really excited about it. So I thought I would make a video as well. Um, before I go, I need to do a shout out to some of my more recent patrons, including Michael Hopcroft, Matthew DeWitt, Christopher Brown, Blue Rugby, and Ty L, who have all recently pledged at a very high level to help keep the channel going. So thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate all of your help. And that's it for today. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.